Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And it's time for another Week in Review. This one finally being filmed on Friday. I usually end up filming these on Wednesday or Thursday just so that I'm not doing things last minute. But it's been an action-packed week with a lot of videos and a lot of games played. And so this is going to be last minute. But that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. As usual, the Week in Review is going to be the news. With a little light on news this week. Not a ton of new stuff. Followed by uh, the topic of the week. Followed by what I played. And then the videos that we had last week and a full week in review in that sense. And as usual, these down below are going to be the games I'm hoping to play this weekend. I will talk about it more towards the end of the video. Now with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So starting off the bat, a few new games, not a lot this week. Uh, I saw Free Ride by Friedman Freeze, another new Friedman Freeze game with more Fs in it is going to be coming out. Uh, Myth and Goal from, from Blacklist Games that had a trailer. I'll link down links to everything down below. But Myth and Goal is going to be one of the games in their Blacklist Games series of a miniature pack combined with a game. I'm curious how this one does because... Blacklist Games, they've done, they've done a horror series, which didn't do, I mean, it did well, but by comparison to their fantasy series, not quite as well. And people like fantasy. It's a, it's a general thing. It's standard. It's overdone, but people still go for the overdone stuff. Plus, of course, you can use your overdone stuff much more in your D&D games or whatever it is you're, you're running on the side. Uh, I'm curious how well a sports line does. On the one hand, it's not fantasy. On the other hand, there is a subculture around these, like, sports themed fantasy games. So, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued and very curious to see how it goes. I hope it does well for their sake, but I, I, I imagine it does better than Dire Alliance, but worse than straight up fantasy, but ultimately we'll see over there. Uh, we have The Lost Code. The Lost Code, a new, uh, code breaking deduction game by Leo Colvinu. It's actually going to be a reprint of like straight eight or something like that. And then there's going to be Board and Dice announced a new line. This is an interesting one. Board and Dice, who are famous for their T-series that they did with uh, Daniel Tassini, you know, Tsulkin, Tewantsuyu, uh, more of them. Uh, they are going to be doing a line of games called the Geek Essentials, the first game of which is going to be called Zapotech. And it very much, well, first of all, the thing I think is the most interesting, it's being sold exclusively through Board Game Geek, which is fascinating. Board Game Geek, uh, if you paid attention to Board Game Geek on the side, well, I mean, in general, Board Game Geek exists. It is the board game website to a degree, but they on the side, they have a regular thing you'll see that they'll sell games sometimes. They sell promos in the Geek Store, but they also sell games. Now, usually those are games like they'll have a, a run of imports that they brought in to sell specifically, and the prices are reasonable for what they're getting, but they tend to be higher than normal board games because of the nature of, well, when you're trying to bring something in specifically for it. I'm curious I'm very curious what the price point's going to be on this Geek Essential line. Is it going to be more MSRP competing with game store pricing, or is it going to be, you know, discounted online pricing? I'm just, I'm just curious how it works, because Board and Dice, their games regularly go for, depends on the, the, when they came out exactly, but they'll regularly go for that $45 range, sometimes $35 when it gets on lower on sale. I'm curious whether these are going to be $60 games on Board Game Geek, or $45 games, or we'll see. We'll see how that goes. That's going to be our general, uh, games around new games last week was a ton of new stuff this week i got a few don't really have a ton of new kickstarter announcements either it looks like the the kickstarter announcements or the game found announcements were all last week but from there general news is going to be basically two small things first of all is a video we already did this week uh la last week shot basically stronghold games they announced that they are putting terraforming mars Ares expedition as a special target exclusive retail edition before backers get their games now i found out about this after I did my week in review last week, so didn't have that up in time, but I did do a full video on the subject, just given how much, just given how much pushback there was, and I'll talk about that later, I'm not going to talk about it now, I'll talk about it when we talk about the, the videos of the week, but past that, uh, Amazon and Asmodee, they teamed up to deal with counterfeiters, so if you're not familiar already, counterfeit board games are a real problem. It is a common thing for someone to be posting. Speaking of Terraforming Mars, Terraforming Mars is a common culprit here. Azar Catan and Wingspan and any popular game. But Terraforming Mars constantly has questions about, well, did I just get a counterfeit game? People will post like, hey, I got this game, but the card is a little different than my friend's copy. The cubes are a little chintzier, which is hard because the cubes are already chintzy. But whatever it is, people will commonly be posting about the fact that they their copy doesn't looks a little off, whatever game it is. And that's because 
counterfeit games online are a real thing. You have the the work, the development, the cost that going to Chef Mars, and then boom, it's sixty dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it is. And then someone finds a way to make it just a drop cheaper because they can, and to not worry about licensing and overheads and the cost of running a company and the cost of dealing with all your employees. And they just sell your game for a lot less overhead than you are, and they sell it for thirty four dollars. And someone goes ahead and buys it because it's not like a steal of a price. It probably looks good. The game looks good online so it's a common issue on amazon and on ebay i'd say those are the two main places you find this amazon and ebay where you can be buying counterfeit games it's not incredibly common you're probably safe on average but especially if you're seeing a good deal a game that is ten dollars cheaper than what you'd expect there's a decent chance that you might be dealing with a counterfeit and so that's a regular problem and amazon apparently is working together with asmodee on this which is a new team up so we'll see how that goes by the way, as an aside, uh, AntLab Games has been posting more and more new content, completely new stuff. They just did yesterday, I need to watch it, I haven't watched it yet, a, like a Kickstarter roundup series, so I'm very intrigued, I'll be watching that. But they've been doing a lot of new content outside of what they used to do. So, give me one second here. Also, I know it's on a board game, but it's a prototype board game, so it's okay, it's fine. Plus, there's no condensation or anything. I'd probably put this on a regular game too. I wouldn't though, because logic or not, there's only so far I'm willing to go. Anyways, that is going to be the news, general news, which brings us to the topic of the week. This is going to be hopefully a within reason week in review, not over the top, not too long. So, week in review, topic of the week, week in review will be shortly. Topic of the week is as follows, and this is based on a comment I got a few weeks ago. I've been meaning to talk about it, just haven't gotten around to it. And in general, many of the topics of the weeks are going to be based on comments or things, things I just want to kind of address. They're not big deals, not usually, but they are things I want to talk about just because they came up for whatever reason. And to that end, the topic of the week this time is going to be around heavy games. So I had a I had a commenter who said that they used to watch me a lot, but then they found that over time, and this is this is fine by the way, it's okay. I'm just explaining the context of this. But they they said over time that they've stopped watching me and they like no longer I don't know if they said they unsub, but they just stopped watching whatever it was because they find that my taste in games had drifts towards lighter things. I don't play heavy games. I don't play meaty, heavy, weighty games as much. And that to that end, it's just there that my content is less useful for them, which to begin with is fair. If my content's less useful for you, then don't watch it. I'm not trying to convince you otherwise. That said, the reason I wanted to engage with that comment and talk about it is because I play heavy games. I like heavy games. I don't cover heavy games as much as I would like to on this channel, which we'll get into. And this is more of a conversation about just the nature of the nature of me constantly uh, juggling the jobs I have plus YouTube because. One of the things that's interesting, I always find, I always, I've talked about this before, is if this is what I'm doing, if I'm doing like, you know, 10 videos a week while doing this part time, then what's full time look like? Because what is the, what is the point of being full time if I can do this part time? So first of all, it would be nice to breathe. It's always helpful. Uh, secondly is there are things I can't do while I'm trying to, there are sacrifices I have to make while I'm trying to juggle three different things. Uh, one thing, for instance, is going to be campaign games. I've talked about this before. Campaign games I do, right right now the way I cover campaign games is I play enough to be able to give a reasonably informed opinion, and then sometimes I finish it. Wild Ascent I finish it, for instance. Wild Ascent I played like six games, I gave my review, and then I played the remaining four because I wanted to close up the campaign. Whereas Chronicles of Junagar, I played like six games, and I haven't picked it up since. I plan on diving back into it shortly because I have Apocalypse, but I haven't picked it up since, not because of a lack of interest, but because I just have limited time, and it's like an 18 campaign scenario. That's another 12 campaigns. I'll get to it. I want to. I'm not getting rid of my copy. I like the game, but jumping back into it is a little harder right now, and most campaign games have that problem. Most campaign games, I currently cover enough to deal with the channel. Uh, we got Pandemic Legacy Season 0 that I need to play with my wife, and I haven't dived into it yet because getting in 20 games of a game 20 sessions of a game right now while i'm still juggling there are general sacrifices that are being made sacrifices i'm fine with i'm very very happy with my life right now very happy being involved in content creation being involved with all these games is amazingly fun but it doesn't come with some trade-offs and like one of those other trade-offs is going to be i used to and i've talked about this in older videos i used to play 80 percent of my games were 80 percent of my plays were older games that I liked and only 20% were new. So as much as it was Cult of the New, I had all this time for the older games at the same time. And Cult of the New as well has shifted. Cult of the New as well has continuously shifted. I think I'm closer to around 60-40 at this point. Maybe even 50-50. I'd have to check my stats. In terms of just playing new games that are just uh, new games versus playing the older favorites that are tried and true and tested and that I love. 
again, there's a, just a, a degree of trade-off. If I'm going to introduce 150 new games a year that I wasn't playing before, it has to come from somewhere. Now, like I said in the past, I hope to eventually phase out at least one, hopefully both my jobs. I do want to do content creation full time, but it's, it is a process along the way, which brings us to heavy games. Heavy games are something that like games like, uh, you know, let's look at my shelf right now, just off the bat. I have The Gallows, Lisboa, Escape Plan, I have Tracurian, I have Feast for Odin, I've played Feast for Odin, I have Caverna, I haven't played Caverna yet. I have, uh, an, I, I have Anachrony, I said already, I want to get Tracurian. There's a bunch of other games out there. I have uh, Antiquity and Indonesia, which to be fair, I have played both, but I played them like six years ago. Food Chain Magnet, I still play on a regular basis, that's in my rotation. But like Antiquity and Indonesia, I need to read the rules again, dive back into it. There are dozens of games I have and dozens of games I want to get that are on the heavier side. Uh, so speaking of the T-Series, I have Tawanta See You, I have, I've only played Sulkin from the T-Series. I have the rest. I have them all on my shelf, but I haven't got them to the table. And I find specifically the category of heavy Euros has been one of the trade-offs along the way. I find that nowadays it is easier, it is quicker to be able to read the rules, play four or five games, and then get a review out of a game that is I have to think through recent reviews, but what's the review that's going up? I don't even know what I have. But if you think through like the various reviews I've put up on the channel, the game length is going to be a factor. There are exceptions and things I've been able to cover, partially because of how hot they are. ISS Vanguard, it's a huge chunk of time. Uh, either Fields, those are games that took eight plus hours of gameplay before I could do a review. And so those are commitments. And ISS Vanguard, I'm going through again right now with the ship base 2.0. So there are exceptions. Chronicles of Junigar, Wild Descent, those are any campaign game I have definitely given the, the time, the attention to play. But even something like Mosaic, getting in four or five games of Mosaic to review took around maybe eight hours, nine hours for four or five games. Do you know how much time it takes to get in four or five games of, I don't know, Caverna to get it to the table, to play it, to learn the rules, to be on top of it? I find heavier games take more time to dive into. Heavier games take more time to learn the rules. Mosaic is ridiculously easy rules. The game's pretty streamlined and simple. It needs some playtesting, but it's a pretty streamlined, simple, simple game. Versus games like Caverna, that's a beast of a rulebook to get through. That's a beast of a game to set up, to play, to play it again and again. And so one of the things I have definitely done less of is playing newer, heavier games. My older favorite games, I still I still love, I still play. I still play Coimbra, I still play Food Chain Magnet, I still play uh, Gentis, Brass, all those other games. But there is certainly a trade-off in terms of some types of games, specifically campaign games to a degree, as well as heavier Euros. Those tend to be harder to table, which doesn't mean I have a lack of interest in them. It doesn't mean I have a lack of appreciation for them. It just means I currently, until I can free up time, until I can get more of a focus and get more things done, there is a trade-off in terms of my heavy game coverage. It's not a lack of appreciation. It's a practical constraint. That said, doesn't mean you should watch my videos if you're not seeing the types of games you like. It's just an explanation that they'll be back, just not today. And with that, let's go ahead and head on into the what I've played this week. These games are just enough of an angle that I keep worrying my coffee will snooze, though it'll start drifting down towards me. So, Games we've played this week. Let's go through it. So we have more Assassin's Creed. Oh, more Assassin's Creed. We got more, some more, more games of Assassin's Creed done. We got, I think I said this last week already. It depends on when, when is this video starting from? That was Sunday. So I covered it probably there. Okay. I don't know exactly when I started last week's, but we got, remember the, the series of, of roll and write games I wanted to play, uh, Copenhagen, Escape, and, and the other one, Alhambra. I uh, got all those played this past week. We have, I'll have a review of the three coming soon. We have Assassin's Creed that I got played. Some more games of Oros. Oros is a game that, Oh, interesting. I, so that's interesting. I've actually already filmed my review of Oros. It's an upcoming Kickstarter, but I filmed my review a few weeks ago and I've kept playing Oros. Ooh, I should have kept it on my list. Interesting. Another video I did with Jesse. Either way. So Oros, we've got some more games of Oros in after my review of it already. We have a uh, Terrifying Mars Ares Expedition. Got some games of that in for the coverage. I did a play this, not that video this week. We'll talk about that soon. Paleo. I got some Paleo. I got, well, I got a few games of Paleo in. Not a, there's a review coming at some point. Not right away. I want to dive more into it. It does have some unlocking elements. That means I do need to get some more plays in before I feel comfortable covering it. But it's basically they have modules and you can go through the modules with difficulty levels. But Paleo is effectively a cooperative game that reminds me of Friday. Friday. It reminds me, it, it makes me feel like someone said, hey, I like Friday, but I want to play Friday with more people and I want to develop it more. And I like Friday a lot. Friday's not going anywhere. I might do a play this between the two, play this not that between the two. I don't know, but they very much do give me the same feeling in the gameplay and the theme and the survival aspect and all that. But Paleo is basically you're running a tribesman, you're running a bunch of cavemen or whatever it is through their Neolithic times, whatever 
period of time they're in, Paleo-Neolithic, Paleolithic, I don't know what it is. But either way, you're trying to cooperate together as you deal with hunting down woolly mammoths, finding shelter, whatever emergency is going on. And it's a very interesting card play system. I It's bizarre in the sense that the more I play it, the well, not bizarre, but it, the more I play it, the more I like it. Every time I play it and lose, I haven't won yet, I keep wanting to dive into it again. So I believe we have gameplay coming out on Quackle's channel for that one, but there will be more coverage of it as well once we have once we feel the, the full depth of it and dive into it. That's me, Paleo. Got a few games of that in. We have Legend Academy. Legend Academy is delightful. Legend Academy is going to be an upcoming Kickstarter by Eldorado Games. And Legend Academy, again, Jesse put out a video that is actually, if today is Friday, Jesse's put out a video that's going out today, Quacklope. On Quacklope's channel, there'll be a video about Legend Academy that is your yesterday. But basically, the game is delightful. Its powers and abilities left, right, and center. And to that end, it's currently broken. It's got a solid core, but it needs to be a little bit cleaned up because of some combos can be ridiculously too powerful, which is fun. And I'm worried that we'll playtest it and balance it and have it be less fun. I'm genuinely worried about it because right now it's ridiculously fun, but we'll see about that. It's going to be upcoming Kickstarter and game found in roughly a month. We have Lords of Hellas. Got more plays of Lords of Hellas in, which means you can expect a review coming soon. I'd like to get at least one more play in before I do a review, but we shall see. Review coming soon on Lords of Hellas. Uh, Scarface 1920. Got some games in of that. Oh my gosh. So Scarface 1920. We got, okay, one, two, two games of, the three games of Scarface 1920. Uh, and that's going to be one that we, so, so, I have a review coming on it soon. We have a gameplay coming of it soon. Uh, Scarface 1920 is, well, currently on Kickstarter. You can check out that one. Uh, I'll give you a heads up, just as a heads up right now. It's not currently a five. I could see it getting there over time, but it's a lot of fun. So we'll talk about Scarface 1920 more in the review, but really genuinely enjoyed it. It's hands down my favorite mobster game. That said, take it with a grain of salt because I don't think I've played some of the big ones. I haven't played Godfather, Corleone's Empire. I have played nothing personal. I've played more. I can't think of what they are offhand. We have Volferian. Volferian Guilds is a game coming to Kickstarter. I've played the base game a few times a while ago, and I have played the expansion now twice over this weekend, which is going to be basically more Volferian. It does improve the game in a variety of ways. You can expect a review coming for that at some point. Uh, we have Isis Vanguard. Isis Vanguard, some more plays of that. Like I said already, we're doing the ship phase. We're slowly going through the campaign. So we did a ship phase, a planet phase, another ship phase, another planet phase. That's where we are so far in that. We have Beast. Beast is going to be an upcoming uh, hidden hidden movement game that's going to be coming to you from Mildhall, mm, Midhall, something like that. Midhall Studios, I think it's called. It's on my shelf over there. But it's going to be coming to Kickstarter in August. I will have coverage of that. We'll be getting more plays of that in. That was my just my first intro play. We have more Assassin's Creed, more Paleo, more ISIS Vanguard, more ISIS Vanguard, some Soul Raiders, some more Soul Raiders. Oh, Soul Raiders. I didn't talk to you about Soul Raiders. Soul Raiders is a game that's also coming to Kickstarter July 7th, I want to say. It's a point and click adventure game just in a tabletop space it's interesting it's very intriguing to go through uh it's actually interesting so if i were condensing my entire review into one word and we did this in the review but my reward would be intrigued and crocklope jesse's view is word is hopeful because it it what we were given to play I, we played through it one and a half times we played through half the prologue and just get a feel before we went on camera to play it and then we played it on camera now we didn't we can't fully review the game. We got a taste of the game. The game itself is three chapters, and each chapter has, like, hundreds of cards and 40 locations. And our prologue gave us, like, eight locations and 12 cards. It was giving us a, here's how this game plays, experience it, enjoy it, see what it does for you. And I am intrigued by it. I'm not sold by it, because we... The promise of what the game is can't possibly be contained in eight cards. If you've ever played, if you ever played one of the unlock escape room games and you know how the, the, each one has a little tutorial thing of like eight cards, those things get, when I first played that tutorial for unlock, it gave me a taste of what unlock was and it intrigued me and it pulled me in and unlocked continued to deliver on that promise. But you can't review the tutorial. It's not enough. It guides you too much. It holds your hand too much and doesn't give you full linear pathways of whatever. Not linear pathways. I want non-linear pathways. But anyway, so yeah, I'm intrigued for Soul Raiders. I think it could be a good game. It depends how how in-depth that system actually is. Which brings us finally to the week in review. Week in review. So to begin with, this past Saturday, we put up a few videos, and some of them were up, went up by mistake. So I had told you that there's going to be, last Saturday, I told you there's going to be a review for King of 12. That didn't happen. Effectively, what happened is, 
I filmed my video last week on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever it was, and then on Friday, I got a surprise upload to my channel that Shira uploaded a solo review of Scarface, which I didn't know was happening. And I was like, well, I guess I'll bump King of 12, because King of 12 is, I mean, nothing against King of 12, I like it, I'll have a review at some point, but basically King of 12 is definitely not as currently relevant as Scarface 1920. So I bumped that, and so instead, we had last week, we had... A review of Scarface 1920, we had gameplay of Assassin's Creed, and then the third problem is I accidentally had a video, Bullet, I had Bullet, uh, the review for Bullet that was supposed to go up Tuesday, went up on Saturday as well. I had set the wrong time, didn't realize, I logged on after the weekend, you know, I'm always offline for Shabbat, and then I logged online, and I was like, oh hey, look at that, Bullet went up without a thumbnail, at the same time as Assassin's Creed, yay, I love it when that happens, I don't love it when that happens, just for the record, I don't, I like my things timed, I like my things scheduled, organized, I do, I don't like when things go up at the same time. It bugs me. Anyways, though, so yeah, we had a review. Let's cover those games. So Scarface 1920, I won't talk about that that much yet because that was Shear's review. I'll have my own review coming soon before the campaign ends. And when I say my own review, it's with me, Quackalope, and uh, Shira. Me, Jesse, and Shira. Uh, then we had a gameplay of Assassin's Creed. I still love Assassin's Creed. I'm still diving into it. It's actually on the table over here. But I am into my next scenario already, and I plan on keep playing. I will have a review at some point. Um, honestly, at this point, I could review it. I'm a lot of hours in, although that's because I'm having fun, not because I have to. I'm well past the point where I feel comfortable reviewing it, but I am still having fun. So, either way. So yeah, Scar that's Assassin's Creed. And then Bullet. Bullet is a 4 to 5 for me. It's an enjoyable game, a lot of fun. It's a game that when I first played it, I thought I would get rid of it because I enjoyed my first play, but my first play was just plain solo and... I wasn't as pulled in by it. When I played it with people, I enjoyed it more. And when I played it with the boss mode, whether co-op or solo, I enjoyed that more as well. So it's a game where you're smashing bullets into people. It has elements that are enjoyable. I'm looking forward to the expansion content. I don't need the expansion content. I haven't played all the base game characters. Actually, have I played? I played a bunch of the base game characters. I don't think I've played all of them yet, just yet. Anyways, that's going to be Saturday. Then Sunday. Sunday is top five reasons your campaign will fail. That was one of two videos that went up that day. Basically, it's a video that, it's a video I've been meaning to do for a while. Some of these more targeted videos are a little more interesting to do because it's like a subset of the population, meaning who's the target audience for a video that's about why your campaign is likely to not do well on Kickstarter. And the target audience is going to be one, people who are interested in the topic, which is probably a decent amount of people, but not the same level of interest as some of the other videos. And then, of course, people considering Kickstarters. And the basic idea of it is there are a lot of smaller campaigns that don't do well in Kickstarter, and I would say they very often share a common set of traits. One of the biggest ones is going to be a lack of buzz. Often they, the game won't look polished, the, the price point will just be unreasonable, and it might be the only price point you can do, but it still will result in people not backing your campaign. And so I, I always, whenever I see people repeating the same mistakes, I always feel bad. I'm like, there, there are communities you can tap into, there are things you can do. More often than not, you can know in advance whether your campaign will fail. If you pay attention... Whenever I do the upcoming Kickstarter video, whenever I talk about games that are, Kickstarters that are upcoming, there's often a decent subset of games I don't talk about. And if you overlap the games that we know about that are coming, that I choose not to talk about, a lot of them do fail. And there's a reason I chose not to talk with them. That it's one, of, it is to a degree self fulfilling prophecy, but a lack of buzz, a lack of attention, a lack of anything around that community, that game means I view it as something that's likely to fail, and then I don't give it its own further buzz because if I talk about it, it'll be an additional bump, it'll be an additional twenty hundred people that you know click on it and are interested in it. But I'm not trying to. It's one of those things. The games that whatever degree of buzz a game currently has, the more likely it'll get clicks, attention as I talk about it. Content creators can't make a game succeed. They can help it. They can't make a game succeed. You need to do a lot of other things along the way. That was Sunday. Then later that Sunday, I did a Black Rose Wars unboxing. So it's a Black Rose Wars unboxing. It's an unboxing that I actually filmed like three weeks ago, something like that. So it's interesting because it's the first time. It's the first video that I was started talking about the nature that I was giving a bunch of fives in recent reviews. By the way, more on that soon. But uh, it's one that I, yeah, it's one that I started talking about giving fives in recent reviews. And then I didn't put that video up because it kept getting pushed. It kept getting pushed. It's not that time sensitive. It's an older game. And then I just eventually finally got it up this past Sunday. So enjoy that. That's a game that has way too much content and there's more coming. Then on Monday, we have all the late pledges. All the late pledges. It's uh, basically an hour of me rattling through 100 different games, talking about the various late pledges that are available. There is one that I have backed because of the video and two that I'm leaning towards. So I, I backed Sniper Elite, unfortunately, because of the video. I, I hadn't interested it before. I said no. I went back. I, I backed it. The videos cost me money too, to be very clear. 
And then Wolfenstein 3D, I haven't packed it yet. Don't know what to do with that one. I'm, t I'm tempted by it. I've heard good things from people who... I've heard good things, but I'm tempted without being completely... I haven't backed it yet. Let's put it that way. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, that's Wolfenstein 3D by Arkin. I passed on that one for now. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, we had a few videos. We had Wild Descent, Levon Rising unboxing. Some of the most gorgeous miniatures I have seen. If you haven't watched that unboxing, just jump on through and look at a few of the miniatures. Amazing production quality. Check out the dragon at the end. Uh, amazing stuff. Uh, I mean, listen, I'm not even here to talk about the game right now. I'll talk about the game more later, but... It's and my coverage, to be very clear, my coverage for the game will be up. I just got the campaign notes two days ago. I haven't had a chance to dive in yet. I will be diving into it. I want to get a bunch of content. I want to get a bunch of games in. I don't need as many games as I did for the prior because it's mostly the same gameplay, small differences. But I want to experience the campaign, the branching pathways, because they are doing things different than the campaign itself. The the game, meaning when you play the game, it's going to be branching pathways, choose your own adventure, stuff like that, consequences of your actions. So I'd like to experience as much as I can. I'll probably have a review coming up in like maybe in a week from now. We'll see exactly when, but no, it won't be when it launches. I, I'm going to be a little bit behind in that one. Uh, then we had later on Tuesday, we had Valor and Villainy, um, Valor and Villainy Ludwig's Labyrinth review with Jesse. Short version is it's a better, and I didn't rate this. I realized this. I didn't rate it because I played it once, but just to be very clear, I said it's a better game than uh, Valor and Villainy. I, and Valor and Villainy is a game that I gave a four. The Ludwig's Labyrinth is easily better than Minions of Mordek to me. I enjoy the changes a lot more. I enjoy the more spells and abilities. No surprise there. I enjoy the cooperative play, which I wasn't sure about, but either way, you could still play a co-op or one versus many. But ultimately, for me, it's still going to be a four to four. I can tell you that much. I don't see it while I enjoyed it more, and while it definitely is a higher four, I don't see it branching into a five still. The gameplay is still a lighter style of gameplay that falls in the same vein as a game like Black Plague or Cthulhu Death May Die, but I like those ones a lot more. But either way, solid game, check it out. I backed it on uh, Kickstarter. I have to think about it nowadays, but I backed it on Kickstarter, and you can check that one out. You can get the original two, I believe. Uh, from there, we had Terraforming Mars Play This Not That with Terraforming Mars versus Terraforming Mars uh, Ares Expedition. And that was one that, I mean, all three of us, and I, I touched on this in the video, all three of us heavily leaned towards Terraforming Mars. I am not keeping Ares Expedition. If I want a shorter Terraforming Mars, I will play Mosaic, or I'll play a different game entirely. Uh, there are... It's, it, Ares Expedition is a good game, and I think it will potentially be a good game for people who aren't as in love with Terraforming Mars as we all are. I think for people who love Terraforming Mars, I think Ares Expedition will be a disappointment. I could be wrong. I, I'm curious I'm curious the the population, because it's... I'm curious. I'm curious to see how it plays out. I don't. I think it's a good game. I don't think it's a replacement for Terraforming Mars or anything remotely close. Not if you love Terraforming Mars. Uh, then Tuesday. Tuesday was going to be. That was Tuesday. Then Wednesday. Wednesday was a six seed. Should you back it? Video short version covering the Kickstarter. It's not going to be the typical Mythic Games Kickstarter because they're not doing. They're doing a big box Kickstarter with an IP, and they're not doing tons of stretch goals. They're doing daily reveals. It's less of an obviously good back. I'm still keeping an eye on the daily reveals. I think it's a decent back. I don't think it's an amazing back, but it does very much depend on just what shows up across the course of the campaign. On Thursday, Thursday, we had a video covering Stronghold and Target and Ares Expedition. Basically, for those who don't know, like I said already in the beginning of the video, Stronghold basically sold a Target exclusive version of Ares Expedition, leaving a lot of backers frustrated. I put out a video on that. I'm not going to overly talk about that in this video, but one point that I touched upon in the video that I forgot to come back to is death threats. There were literal death threats, I think from only one person, I could be wrong though, in the Kickstarter comments from people who just need to seriously, and I, I'm not saying this sarcastically, I'm not saying this in a way to dismiss anyone who's anyone else, they need to get on meds, they need to see someone, it's not well. There is a person in the board game community who's, this is not their first appearance, they're, they're on YouTube comments, they're on Kickstarter comments, that they have resorted to death threats and execution lists on a regular basis, it is toxic, it is disgusting, it is problematic, they need to see professional help. Anyone who thinks it's okay to issue death threats over a board game, which they have done multiple times, it's not cool. I don't care how much, and, and not even just death threats. I've seen people like, I hope your company fails. I hope everyone loses their jobs. There's like, there's different ranges and degrees of toxicity. I don't hope for any of that. I hope Stronghold Games continues to succeed. I hope they continue to do well. And I hope that the people for whom their Kickstarters are not the target for, I hope those people target. <laughs> Sorry. I hope the people for whom those Kickstarters are not the target for, I hope those people do not back their Kickstarters. That's the only thing I hope. If you are backing things out of FOMO and you're frustrated with the result, then you need to evaluate your own backing decisions. Do I think Stronghold treated their backers well doing the Kickstarter or after? No, I don't. I think they released a product, sold a product, and then treated it like a business transaction and moved on, which is okay. 
but then you should do the same. Don't continue to fall victim to the same tactic again and again and again. But I don't wish for anyone to lose their job. That's disgusting. Whatever. Anyways, that was that. It's, it's always, always difficult with these things. Disagree with people. Don't wish to harm upon them. Anyway, so that was going to be Thursday. Then Friday. Friday was a Patreon vote on video where basically they gave me like 50, 60 games to talk about. Each one got 30 to 45 seconds as I rattled through them pretty quickly. Anything from I love this game, I like this game, I didn't like this game to I never even heard of this game. It's just me rattling through a bunch of games that they, I said, hey, give me any game you want to hear my opinion on, whether or not I've played it or anything. Let's talk about that. And finally, we get to today. Longer video than I thought it would be today. Today is going to be a few things, well, just two videos, assuming my schedule doesn't accidentally post more videos. We're going to have two videos. We have at 12, we have the ISSS planet phase for the prototype 2.0. And then at two, we have two Eastern Standard Time. We have the ship phase of ISS Vanguard, both diving into them. They're both very guided. To be very clear, they are very guided. They're meant to be tutorials. So they literally walk you through most of the decisions you make. Not all, but a decent amount of decisions you make, you're walked through, do this, do that, pick this, select that all in the goal of teaching you the game there. One of the changes they're making is their revision to the way they onboard you onto the Terraforming Mars, the, the ISS, uh, the ISS Vanguard board game. So that's going to be, those are the two videos today, just ISS Vanguard content. If you're not interested in that, then great. We'll see you again tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow and next week, next week, there will be a two back or not to back video. We skipped last week. So there's definitely going to be this week. I don't remember what else is on my schedule. I'll have to check. There's a bunch of things on my schedule. One thing I do have coming up is over the past week, one of the things I have done is I have cataloged every single game that I've ever reviewed, uh, every single game that's ever left my collection. Basically, anything, anytime I ever talked about a game on the, not ever talked about it, but basically games that I'm talking about in terms of mostly review content, reviews, play this, not that, games leaving my collection, I've cataloged them all in a board that I'm going to be making public soon, and it's just going through all my reviews, and I did this, by the way, specifically, and this is something I, I can't let it go, it's unfortunate, I need to work on that, but specifically because I gave things fives recently, and because I know I have more fives coming up, you know, there are a few games that are going to get fives this year as well, I can think of at least three, so we'll see, but basically... Because of all that, I specifically decided to catalog everything to get an idea of all my ratings, all my numbers. It's not my ratings of my entire collection, but anything I talked about on the channel in general. And the reason for that, by the way, well, whatever, I'll talk about it more in that video. At some point over the next two or three weeks, I plan on doing a video going through it all basically introducing the board before I make it public. It's a public, it's not board game geek. It's a notion board that I'm going to make public searchable, all that stuff. Uh, just so anyone can go through it at any, at any given point, as I have said before, threes by far are my most common, most common ratings. I have around 20 games or so that I rated a two. I have like two or three games. I rated a one and then threes are my most common rating followed by a chunk of fours. And then I think like 25s total, like since doing the channel at the beginning. And even that 20 is biased because a good, more than 20, there's more than 20, it's like 30, 40, something like that. But even that 30, 40 is biased because a good chunk of them are coming from me picking my favorite games to review. I did a bunch of series of picking my favorite games, picking, uh, you know, Inish and Cyclades and Spirit Island, picking some of my already established favorite games and reviewing them, which means, yeah, they're getting a five. But either way, I'll go through that so it's publicly searchable so that over time people can see that, yes, I do love games, but I, I still give threes more often than I give fours and fives. And then lastly, that's going to be something coming up. I don't know if it's next, this coming week, but at some point. And lastly, we have the games on the table. So Villagers. Uh, Villagers is going to be having an upcoming Kickstarter with an expansion. I think it's Villagers Shifting Seasons, I think. I hope to play this this weekend so I can be more informed about Villagers. We have Platformer that's going on to Game Found July 1st. I've already played this one, but I will be introducing some people to it this weekend. Might be doing a gameplay. I don't know. We shall see. Then we have Valeria Card King. That's not true. We have Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, a game that I've already played the prototype. This one showed up and arrived this past week. I hope to table this one and give like a full proper review. I didn't really give it a full review. I talked about it and I should you back a video. And then we have Steam Watchers. This is the least likely of the four to get to the table. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be knocking out these three pretty simply, pretty quickly, but the Steam Watchers depends on the player count, depends on what we get, and depends if I can finish the rules in time. But I'd love to table this one to get some content out on this. Past that, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thanks so much for hanging around on these longer week in reviews. And as always, well, not as always, have a good weekend. Enjoy yourself. I will be back next week. And now we go into the, as always... Have a good one.